Hi everybody, this is our very last math lesson for this school year. So I hope you're excited because we get to use a vending machine that's in your math journal. Now before we begin, you're going to need a math journal and you're also going to need a scrap sheet of paper or your math notebook that you were writing things in um, just because we're going to be solving some problems. And then I want to let you know that I made a mistake on our weekly schedule. I said you would be doing pages 200 and 201 on that schedule. That's actually not the case. We're going to be doing pages 199 and 201. So we'll work on those together here in just a minute. But just to let you know um, that one page number is wrong. So let's get started. Pull out that scrap piece of paper and I want to share my screen with you to show you some problems that we're going to be solving using the vending machine today. This is a picture of a vending machine and you will find this vending machine in your math journal on page 197. Um, I also have a picture of it here on my screen and we're going to solve a couple problems together because um, when we have a vending machine, the items in the vending machine all cost different prices. So it works out really well that we can add or subtract the prices that are shown for the different items that are in that vending machine. So this first problem says, I want to buy a pack of cheese sticks. So if you look at the vending machine, you can see the cheese sticks. They're at the bottom in the corner and they're 25 cents. And a bag of pretzels, which is 65 cents. How much money do I need? Now you're going to solve this problem by adding those two numbers together on your scrap piece of paper or in your math notebook. Now you might be thinking, wow, those are really big numbers, 25 and 65. How am I going to add those together? Well, we have been learning strategies all year long about how to add numbers together. Usually we're not adding numbers that are quite that big, but I have some strategies that you already know that you could use for this. So I made this, um, it's like an anchor chart, which is like a list of strategies that you can use. And I put this in your announcement page if you want to print it out and have a copy of it for yourself. But these are strategies for adding two digit numbers. Remember, a two digit number is a number that has two numbers in it, like 21 has a two and a one or 35 has a three and a five. All right. So here are some strategies we've been learning all year long that you can use to add these two numbers together. You can use your number grid. Remember, you have a number grid in the back of your math journal. You can use base 10 blocks. So you don't have a set of base 10 blocks at home, but you can easily draw base 10 blocks by making lines for the longs and dots for the cubes. And if you need to, you can make a square for a flat, but you probably won't go over 100. Another addition strategy for two digit numbers is to look for ways to make 10 or ways to make doubles. So here in the picture, this is showing ways to make 10. We know six and four makes 10, eight and two makes 10, okay? You know your doubles like seven plus seven and five plus five. Those are numbers that um, are easily remembered in our brains, making 10 and making doubles. So those are really good ways to solve problems even when we're using big numbers like 25 and 65. And then this one says count up from the larger number. Okay so for example in this case the larger number is 65 and I can count up 25 from there. Well I know that 25 is made up of two tens and five ones. So 65 plus two tens would make 60, 70, 85, right? Because I started at 65, I'm adding two tens, I can go 75, 85. And then the other part of that was five. So I had 65 and 25. If I add two tens, I get 85. If I add five more, I go 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, and then I figure out my answer is 90. 
remember you have this um, addition strategy anchor chart in your announcement page. So if you'd like to print off a copy of those strategies I just showed you, you can do that. Or you could just look at them on Seesaw. Um, or you can use whichever strategy is your favorite because it's up to you how you want to add the numbers together. So this one says Noah buys raisins. So you can find the raisins on there. They cost 45 cents. And Leo buys mints. Those are 35 cents. How much did they spend all together? When we see the words all together, that's a big clue that we are adding numbers. So we're trying to add raisins and mints, 45 and 35. Use one of those strategies I just showed you to add those numbers together on your paper. All right, next problem. Stan bought crackers for 30 cents and sunflower seeds for 60 cents. How much did he spend? So here we are with two numbers that both end in zero, which makes adding them very easy. Write down how much he spent. Next one says, Sonia wants to buy a pack of cheese sticks, which for 25 cents, and a bottle of water for 75 cents. How much will she have to pay? So make sure you're using those strategies. Maybe you want to use like base 10 blocks for this one. Or maybe you prefer to use a number grid. It would be really easy to count on for this one because 75 is such a high number and 25 is a much smaller number. So you could count on from 75. Christopher wants a pack of cheese sticks for 25 cents, granola for 40 cents, and crackers for 30 cents. How much does he need? So now we're adding three numbers together. They all have two digits in them, but you can use the same strategies I just showed you for adding 25, 40, and 30. Natalia bought rice cakes for 50 cents and one other snack. She spent 80 cents. What else did she buy? And how much did it cost? All right, so this one is turned around a little bit for us. We know she bought rice cakes. The rice case cakes cost 50 cents. In total, she spent 80 cents. That means there's something that she bought that costs the difference between 80 cents and 50 cents. So on that last one, we're trying to figure out she bought these rice cakes for 50 cents, but in total she spent 80 cents. We have to figure out what else she bought. So here's where we can write an addition problem or a subtraction problem to go with that. So what we're really trying to solve is 50 plus what equals 80? Hmm, 50 plus what equals 80? That means I could use a number grid to start at 50 and stop at 80 and then that will give me my missing number. I could also subtract here. So this is just like a fact family and we've been doing those for a while now and in a fact family we can use addition and subtraction and put the numbers in those different places to figure out what the missing number is, right? So 50 plus something equals 80. Well 80 minus 50 will give us that something. So your job is to figure out in whatever way you want what that missing number is and then write down on your paper what is the thing that costs that much because it has a name on it. Each of these items has a name in addition to a price. So write down the thing that she bought. Now at the beginning of this video I said that I made a mistake about which pages we were going to be doing in our math journal. So um, I had posted that we would be doing page 200. We're not going to do that today because that's actually part of a different lesson and um, you don't have all the information to be able to do this. I have to give you some of the information. It's not in your book. So we're actually not going to do page 200. We are going to be doing pages 201 and we're going to go back to page 199 because that's a page of math boxes that will be a good page for us to do.
Okay, on page 201, it says write number stories about the vending machine on journal page 197. The thing we just did where I shared my screen with you was number stories with a vending machine. You just solved six number stories with the vending machine and they were all just a little bit different um, and they all involved a person buying two or three items from the vending machine and they wrote it down in like a little story, right? So that's exactly what you're going to do here. You're going to write three different stories. So there's three different boxes there and you're going to have someone in your home try to solve them. So you are the author of the stories. So make sure your stories are completely different. So you're going to have them buying different things in each story, or you're going to have them buying two things here and three things here or whatever. But um, you can have someone in your house help you solve the problem after you write it down. So it'll be kind of like giving your parents a test. <laughs> um, so maybe your parents can even use the addition strategies that I Put on that anchor chart for you and they can show you how they would use those strategies to solve the problems. When you're done with this page you can do page 199 which is the page of math boxes. I will quickly read these to you um, and you can do them on your own. Number one says name at least two attributes of all trapezoids. As a reminder, this is what a trapezoid looks like. It looks like the tables that you sit at, at that you sit at at school. Um, we push them together to make hexagons, but they're each trapezoids on their own. Number two says, what is a defining attribute of a rectangular prism? So what makes this shape this shape? What is something that all rectangular prisms have that make them rectangular prisms? Number three says, divide the rectangle into four equal shares. So make sure you have straight lines to divide and make sure they're all equal. And then write a name for one of the shares. So that means that one of the parts will be one out of how many parts? You're going to name one of the shares. Number four says, write the numbers. So you just have to count the base 10 blocks. And number five says, use your number grid or base 10 blocks to solve. Explain what you do first. So 35 plus what equals 76? They're giving you a choice. Use the number grid or base 10 blocks to solve it. Your choice, either one. But they just want you to explain what would you do first in that situation? How would you solve that on a number grid? Or how did you solve it using base 10 blocks? They just want you to be able to explain what you did using words. So you're going to have a number answer, but you'll have a word answer too. All right, that's it for math for this year. You should be so proud of how much work you've done. I hope to see you tomorrow at pickup day. Bye.